Welcome back. In this next video, I'm going to discuss how we price futures contracts. So I'll start off by showing you how spot prices and futures prices interact, and then we'll actually talk about the primary pricing equation for futures contracts and forward prices, uh, and we'll, we'll show an example. So to get us started, I wanted to show you a how the price of a certain commodity changes. So I selected natural gas. This is the natural gas industrial price. There's many different prices for natural gas. And we've got this in dollars per thousand cubic feet. Uh, now, as you can see, it's relatively volatile. I mean, granted, we have 24 years here, so you know, go figure. But the thing I want to draw your attention to is what happens when we get to January and then you know, go through the winter. So as you can see, January 1, our price is pretty high, and then the price of natural gas falls over the winter. Uh, that is true for most winters. You know, usually our highest price comes at the start of winter, say, you know, January, and then as we get into February, uh, price might remain high, March, April, price of natural gas falls. The reason it falls is because, well, the market is cyclical. Essentially, uh, there's less demand for natural gas in the spring, in the summer. So, you know, it's basic supply and demand. I'll show you one more graph where this is true. So this is the price of corn by month in the United States over the last decade or so. And uh, as you can see, you know, there's, it's not as volatile, but you can definitely notice some trends here. I've highlighted in gray harvest time each year. So this is basically July through October. And in a lot of these years, you can see a decline in the price of corn. So what's going on here? Well, it's harvest time, and the supply of corn is increasing, and therefore the price will typically fall. So this is something that we see with commodities. Essentially, price falls, and we don't know how much it's going to fall, but that's why we have futures contracts and forward contracts that allow us to hedge against the you know, changes in the price of a certain commodity. Now, I thought I'd show you the, the spot price versus the futures price. So we've talked about futures prices. This is the price of the futures contract on a particular commodity. What is the spot price? Well, the spot price is the current price of that particular asset or that commodity. So the spot price on corn is the price of corn as of today. If I wanted to buy 50,000 bushels of corn, uh, the spot price is the price that I would pay. And as you can see, the spot price and the futures price of corn, they are very highly correlated. You know, when one goes up, the other is typically going to go up. Uh, usually we'd say that the spot price is going to drive the futures price. Now, there's, we can use this in all kinds of ways. You know, one thing I should show just before I talk about the actual formula itself is how do we actually make use of futures if we can't invest in, say, the underlying asset? We can't, you know, purchase some asset at spot price. Well, very often what we'll typically do is we'll buy a futures contract if we can't invest in the underlying asset. So a good example of this would be the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract. If I'm an investor and the market isn't open to buy S&P 500 ETFs, what I could do instead is enter into a, an e-mini S&P 500 futures contract. So uh, the best way to see this is right before the market opens, you might notice that there's some changes in the, the price of the S&P 500 uh, index or you know, the change. there's a change in the value of the S&P 500 index. Well, that change is actually coming from the futures price on the E-mini e S&P 500 futures contract. In other words, investors who can't trade the underlying asset are actually just trading in the futures market. Uh, so this is, you know, basically the big takeaway here is that uh, these markets move very, very uh, strongly. There's a very strong correlation between these, and uh, very often if we can't invest in the spot market, we'll invest in the futures market instead. Okay, so how do we actually price futures contracts? Well, there's a very straightforward formula for most futures contracts and forward contracts. Uh, what we have here is a formula that looks a lot like the time value money formula. I mean, just uh, what this says is that the forward price or the price of some asset at 
you know, some time, some time period in the future, uh, is equal to the spot price or the price of the asset today times the quantity of one plus our risk-free rate. So that's usually going to be a T-bill in the U.S., uh, all to the power of time to maturity or capital T minus lower T. So if we have a, we're trying to price a futures contract or a forward contract that has two years to maturity, that two years goes right there. Uh, so this is the, we assume, annual compounding. If we want to calculate the forward price using continuous compounding, uh, what we do is we use the the exponential, so you know Euler, uh, so you know basically just e to the power of r times number of uh, years to maturity here. Okay, so let's take a look at a very basic example. Current price of a bushel of corn is three dollars and seventy one cents per bushel. You want to lock in the price that you can sell your corn at in six months. So this is similar to that farmer example I gave you in uh, an earlier video. Uh, you you know that the yield on a one-year T-bill is 1.54%. What should the forward price for a six-month futures contract on corn be? Use continuous compound. Well, here's our continuously compounding forward price formula. We have $3.71 as our spot price. We have a 1.54% interest rate and six months to maturity. So in, in, the ter in years, that's 0.5%. So our forward price is actually going to be $3.74-ish. Uh, usually we are going to write this out to the closest 10,000th, uh, so that's why I'm going out to four decimal places. Uh, these, these numbers get very, very uh, granular. Okay, so how do we actually calculate the return on a futures contract? Well, it's very straightforward. Uh, what we do is we use something akin to the, the re basic return formula. We take a look at the selling price of the contract, Subtract the purchase price, and then divide by the amount of margin in our deposit that we deposited. Uh, so that's, I mean, very straightforward. We'll deal with this in class, but you know that's just how we do it. All right. So to summarize, spot prices will fluctuate based on supply and demand. We saw that with, uh, particularly with uh, natural gas and corn. Uh, spot prices and futures prices are very, very tightly related, and the price of a futures contract. Uh, denoted with the forward price, it's essentially just a function of spot prices, or it should be. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to an end, and if you have any questions, just feel free to email me. Thank you.